Welcome to the Contrarians, and yes, it is Wednesday. The topic tonight, righteous logo placement on album covers. So let's get started. Chat room's open. Chat room is indeed open, and we do want to hear from you. We're talking righteous album covers with well well, actually let me rephrase that righteous logo placement on album covers so i hope everybody has gotten used to the concept in the chat because we do want to hear from you i want to welcome todd evans martin of course is here peter kerr and jamie laszlo the gang's all here ladies and gentlemen and we are going to start this right off so uh Wow, I could go as I see it, but uh, I don't know how I want to do this. I know we're going to go three, three, and four, and we're just going to keep going around. I think what I'm going to do is start off with Martin, go to Peter, Jamie, Todd, and myself, and we're just going to keep going around. So if you don't get the concept in the chat, you soon will. So we do want to hear from you. So uh, let's start off with Martin. Martin? Yeah, I'll I'll explain Water a little. So, so yeah, the idea here is that is that you know bands have logos, um, and uh, rather than just plopping it at the top of the middle of the page, uh, have they done something uh, a little bit uh, imaginative uh, with it, kind of thing. So, um, so my first one is Stars Violation, and uh, there you go. Um, and uh, basically, uh, the funny thing about this one, I've I've got one to show uh, once this graphic goes away. But obviously, it is uh, the Stars logo here. I'll show hold this up as well. Um, it is the Stars logo, just uh, you know, big, massive, uh, constructed thing stuck in the side of a mountain. And the funny thing about it is that um, you can't see it on this, but uh, on Angel in the beginning, which I've got framed up in here, and it's kind of hidden behind here. It's all the same sort of colors, and it's the same kind of deal. Where uh, where that thing is just like carved out of rock and stuck in the side of a of like a pyramid or something, and it and it's weirdly the same kind of colors and it's the same kind of band. So uh, and I think stars also, if I remember correctly, um, the the gal on the on the inner sleeve of the debut album might be wearing the stars necklace or something. So that's a use of the logo too. They definitely made necklaces of it uh, as well. So uh, so that is my first one. My second one is Max Webster with Mutiny up my sleeve. And uh, what what is very cool about this one is that that logo was actually made out of. Uh, uh, boy, in the, in the UK, do they call it Perspex, this plastic stuff? Plastic, anyways. It's that clear plastic that you could sort of shine light through. And they actually made this logo. So it's uh, not just stuck at the top of the page there. It actually literally exists. And Grant, if you can make that go away, yeah. on the back cover, they busted it up. And they've got it sitting at their at their feet there. Um, so that literally uh, was a physical thing, that logo. So I thought that was a pretty cool one. And the cool placement is on the back uh, there, all busted up. My next one is Aerosmith Get a Grip. And uh, here you've got the idea of the logo branded on the side of the cow there. You've got the teats with a, with a what is that? Like a, a an ear. I a, think an that's an ear ring or a nose ring or something. Yeah. So you've got that going on with Aerosmith It's a here. nipple ring. So that's haha, you know, funny. Yeah, it's a nipple ring. Exactly. Uh, and then I also had a couple of other Aerosmiths out just for kicks. There's a interesting, it's not their logo, but it's interesting placement with Aerosmith painted on the side of the, uh, you know, the inside of the mine here with the guys. And then I thought, well, I'm in my Aerosmith section. Let's uh, let's get the placement of the logo uh, on this gas station attendance. That's a good shirt. one. So we've yeah. got the Aerosmith logo there uh, on this uh, faceless live album that nobody really remembers. A little self of sanity. <laughs> um, so that is my first three. Let's uh, let's take a quick look over to the comments to see what's going on. Um, get a grip. Audis Q Sime artwork, uh, says Tim. I forgot or maybe never knew that it was a uh, a uh, Hugh Sime one. Uh, good to see Tim here. I was just on Tim's uh, show the other day. And we uh, we talked about the Robert Plant book on one show and then the Thin Lizzy book on another show. Um, let's see. Uh, the Elder of Rock is here saying hello. We've got a hello from Ireland. Good morning from Wales. Uh, so a lot of people coming in here. 
Um, but uh, not a lot of examples yet. So maybe it's a little bit, uh, oh yeah, we got beetle, Sergeant Pepper in the flower bed. So uh, I don't know. You, 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 you got the aura going all over the place. I don't know who's next. Who's next? Uh, we're going to go with uh, Peter Kerr's next. Okay. Okay. All right. First album, the most underrated Deep Purple album with Joe Lynn Turner, in my opinion, Slaves and Masters. So we've got the DP logo, which was sort of like from Perfect Strangers and a little bit of the House of the Blue Light, House of Blue Light. And um, yeah, it's got a crystal ball. Maybe just put it up again. Oh, yeah, sure. So, and you've got a mismatch of all these different sort of themes that are in the album. You know, you've got the keyboards, the astro projection, the mystical side of the lyrics, a lot of things. I think it's Richie Blackmore's brain in a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like that's what's it. inside of it. I'll be yeah. there. Yeah. So, and um, nice. Candace has got the uh, hands she's controlling in. Anyway, that's my theory. <laughs> Slaves and masters. Um. The next one, Grant, uh, is Sweet, uh, off the record. I like nice. this. This is sort of their logo, and it's in a record cartridge. I thought that was kind of neat. Uh -huh. It is kind of it is the logo that they've used for a couple of albums. Hmm. This came out in 1976, and Sweet, unfortunately, were kind of all over. Um, there's no real hits off the album. This is not at their peak, but um, as an album cover goes, I think it's a really neat cover, and it just shows the grooves on the record, um, you know, in the vinyl. I think it's one of their neatest covers, but as an album, it it flopped. Didn't do pretty well heavy though, all. Peter. It it is a kind of a little bit of a dark horse. It is a pretty good album, and it is a heavy album, and it's well recorded. It's got Windy City on it. It's people absolutely this one, right. There you Fever go, ladies and gentlemen. Lost Angels. Next month, dark horse episode. Sweet. Ice. That would be a good one. Yeah, I think we're going to do that because that's a perfect yeah. idea. So anyway, go, ahead. go there, ahead. There you go. There you go. Um, and Foo Fighters. There is nothing left to lose. Look, I don't own this album. Not a big Foo Fighters fan, but I had this in my head that we had to put this album cover um, as part of this show. So you got the tattoo. And I think there's a, a number of other bands that have their logos on tattoos. I, ACDC, did they have a like their logo shaved into a person's head? But oh, black, this black was always bars, rattling in my head, this bars. particular album cover. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's all. Maybe. Okay. All right. Cool. cool. Excellent. Who's next? All right. Uh, Jamie Laszlo is up on deck. All right. Um, not all of my covers have the actual famous logo on them, but they do have the artist name or the album name put in in a kind of a creative way. OK, so I'm going to go first with Nectar, a tab in the ocean. These first couple, they work the logo into the actual kind of art. So this would be on the base carved in to the base on whatever that is. I guess it's a tab in the ocean. Um, Funny aside, Jamie, uh, I, I've heard a lot of graphic artists always say it's a real big mistake carving, you know, putting the name right on the artwork. Never do that because it kind of devalues the artwork and now it's now it's tied to that and you can't use it anywhere else. So, huh. so I, I've, I've heard a lot of graphic artists uh, really regret um, sticking the name right into the artwork. Okay. I never thought of it that way. I never thought of it that way either. But hey, this is a plaque under the artwork on Pale Communion Opeth. So you got the uh, the artwork there, and then underneath, which would give you a little information about everything, it says has the Opeth O, nice. which I have on the back of my Jeep, stuck to the window. Very cool. So I I always love that cover. It's just very, it's a handsome cover. Yeah, it's and nice. Great colors. Great album, underrated Opeth. I've got an Opeth wallet, believe it or not. <laughs> from uh from, from a special get together thing with those guys pretty oh, cool yeah very cool <laughs> this one he's wearing it which is a pretty cool jacket pretty cool cover another handsome looking album cover the who quadrophenia yeah kind of like spray Amazing. painted on the back of his jacket there like you know yeah. like he's badass or something i don't know i'm sure it fits into the story of quadrophenia i don't know what the story of quadrophenia is yeah i'm not sure what it is but yeah, I, I don't know if it character. i don't yeah. know if it fits into the story i think that's just a well he's the main dude in it too and and the cool thing also Jimmy. is is showing those guys in the uh in the rearview mirrors relates to the story too because there's a little bit of each who member in him 
he's kind of like a fan and then he's not a fan as part of it as a sub narrative of this story. So he's, he's sort of seeing, seeing the who in him and vice versa kind of thing by having those guys in the rear view mirrors okay. that they put on those scooters. That was a big scooter thing, right? In, in the whole mod thing is have as many mirrors as you, you can have on it and lights and stuff like that. So that's a, your, your standard yeah. mod scooter there. Jimmy the mod. You're right, Logan. Yep. Jimmy the mod. All right. Uh, oh, let's see. We... Are you, are you done, Jamie? That was three, right? That okay, was three. Well, let's see what we've got here in the comments. Tim's chiming in with Kansas monolith. The artwork is a native American theme and the logo has feathers in it. Very yeah, that's cool. a good one. Judas priest jugulator has decent logo placement on that pixelated thank face says uh s v s u v carter uh tim ace uh, acdc logo on a shaved head was for the clipped video cassette i think i can remember that picture um yeah rolling stone between the buttons shaped as a button chicago 10 on a candy bar uh all right over all right, to well, uh, whoever it's over to. that would be uh todd we're going to todd all right, so my first set has a theme, and let's see if you can guess what the theme is when we look at the first uh, image right here. Okay. This is uh, ACDC Power Up, which I think is super cool. I, no, no telling whether or not they actually made that, but they could have. It could yeah. be computer generated, who knows? But it almost makes me wonder if they, it almost makes me think that they, I'm surprised they didn't do it before because that just seems like the perfect logo to be in neon. My next one is a, another cover that I really love, uh, Toto uh, 14. And uh, I just think that's great. It's kind of the sword logo that they used on three or four or five of their different albums. And uh, that setting is just really epic. I just really, really love this cover. Yeah, uh, it is cool. So, uh, and, and then the next one is uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers Unlimited Love, which is kind of the same thing in an urban setting. Hmm. And uh, nice. uh, not, not, not one of my favorite bands, but I think that's a great cover. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that, Ty, because my picks are just, I'm just going to like piggyback onto what you're saying, which is <laughs> Go crazy. for it. It's your All turn. Right. Oh, well, let's get it going. So my first pick, because I just saw these guys on the 80s crew, so I'm all worked up. 38 special. Oh, that's a Look. good one. Nice. And yeah. you know, you've got that right. It's a well, obviously it's supposed to be neon. Um, but when they were on the on the cruise and they had an interview with uh um Alan Hunter, they were saying they had no idea they were presented this record, this album cover. They had nothing to do with it. A and M went, hey, here it is, here's your album cover, and they all the band totally hated it. Hmm. It's pretty so, good. I don't see what's wrong with it. It's a I, they pretty cool like album it. cover. They didn't like it, but it, huh. it is what it is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so there you go. A little bit of information there. Uh, my second one, I'm going to go with Traffic. And the reason I chose this, it doesn't say anything about the band name, but when you look, well, I, I wish I could point with this thing, but where uh, Chris Wood is, he's pointing to the Traffic logo hmm. that's right there. So it's really low key, you wow. know, and it's kind of Very a cool, cool idea, kind yep. of a cool idea for placement on an album cover. I've never noticed like that. that on that cover. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's the traffic logo. I didn't oh. know that was the traffic logo. See, there we are. There we yeah. go. All right. Number three, I'm going to go with, I don't know if I've actually heard SOS. I'm assuming they're a dance funk band of some sort, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I this album cover I've always remembered it forever. And so the fact that they have this blimp with the logo on the side, kind of cool. I can't say I've ever hear, heard SOS, but they're, maybe I have. They're disco soul. Disco? They had a hit called Better Be Good To Me. You, you, If you heard the song, you'd know it was a bit of a hit. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. We're playing, we're referencing disco on the contrarians tonight. So that's yeah. a win-win. All right, cool. Excellent. So that's my three. Okay, over to me. My next over one, to you. Is, uh, Legs Diamond. Uh, which one do you got there? Legs Diamond, Legs Diamond. Yeah, there you go. Legs Diamond, Legs Diamond. So this is uh, this is the back of a car, and they've got just basically <laughs> the, the logo stuck right on the. Uh, uh, <laughs> what the hell is happening? Is that that's not here. Uh, that's 
so this is a basically uh you know a, a car type logo on the back of a car and you've got the bullet uh you know the bullet holes and all that and the uh the gun the uh the guitar into a gun which is kind of a ted nugent concept as well right yeah. and grant if you can remove that you for bet. a second they they kind of do the same thing on the second album classic good heavy album 1977 so it's uh it's again uh kind of like a steel wall of some sort that he's punching through and he's got it and it's kind of embedded into the wall there so that's kind of cool and uh, as a backup sort of similar to that that you know emblem idea uh i had this uh oh, the jethro oh. tull is the same sort of thing it's like a a, a brass uh, plaque stuck on the side of the inside of a ship you know looking out of the the whole yeah, that's perfect thing so that's my first one uh moxie riding high is my second one um so as you can see this is uh the logo uh around the neck of this uh, you know and this the funny thing is this is the same colors again as the as the stars get that out again i can't believe i don't own a copy of this anymore but it's kind of the same color of as this and it's the same colors as that as that angel one i always put them together yeah, because, very similar yeah and basically they're both 77 albums and they're both the heaviest albums by a band with three or four albums and that's it so it, you know the same same era um, and I always put these two together. They both have like, you know, the, the, uh, the kind of the Moroccan look and city look to it as well. So Martin, is that the album? Does that have Mike Reno on it? No, that's, uh, that's under the lights and that's, they're much mellower on that one. That's the last okay. one they ever did before reunion that album there. Um, as you say, Grant, you always say wisely, we're just here to turn people on to music. Exactly. This there is a go. really heavy album for 1977. This is a barnstorming rock and album featuring the great Buzz Shearman who died in a motorcycle accident a few years later, but he has a really sort of, uh, you know, Axl Rose, Bon Scott kind of voice. This is a good, heavy rockin' album. There you uh, go. Uh, Check it out, people. Classic, Canadian classic. Uh, and my last one is uh, Tora Tora Surprise Attack uh, on the side of, uh, of a plane there. Uh, I don't own this album anymore either. This was a pretty decent hair metal album. And uh, this reminds me that uh, I think it's Black Star Riders' debut from 2013, All Hell breaks loose has the same sort of idea where it's on the side of a either a bomb or or the plane itself kind of thing um so that is uh oh yeah and i wanted to mention i didn't didn't bring it out but um ario speedwagon self-titled from 71 also has the stamp emblem on a car idea similar to the legs diamond um all right let's take a quick look over at our uh comments here we've got a mention for extreme three sides to the, uh, every story i can't picture what that's looking like big star number one record van halen 5150 yeah, that's coming up um let's see T uh tim is uh clarifying an early one license deal by beastie boys has something similar but it's on a plane not a blimp says master list average white white band self-titled um queens operation mind crime has an explosive integration of their logo that is in the midst of that nuclear bomb skull, SOS bands, funk, Nick Barker and the reptiles going to pieces. Yeah. Lots of them are coming in. That's pretty cool. Wolf mother has yeah, a cool keep them coming. logo. All right. Uh, over to, was it Peter? Uh, Peter Kerr. Yes. It yes. Is. Peter's yes it is. Is. All right. Let's go to Australia's Rose tattoo and scarred for life. So this is the actual alternative album cover. The, album cover that was in Australia and a lot of regions was all of them having a group hug, um, you know, all the tattooed blokes. And um, that may have been a bit too much um, strong of an image for the, you know, the rest of the world. So um, just putting that back up, sorry. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. It's the rose tattoo emblem is the one, you know, where you've got the kind of like, it's a, a mishmash between a rose and some snakes. And that's their, uh, that's their emblem on the, um, on the, and that uh, album and that cover. looks like the first is it the first Black Label Society album where he's got the booze bottle with it exactly like that right in the middle of it. I think it probably is indexing this absolutely. And maybe 100%. a little Nazareth Sound Alexa too. Yeah, uh, in that one. But yeah. I much prefer the the one with the band on the front. Yeah. To be quite frank, anyway. I've yeah, never seen that. Okay. That is cool. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow. My six. New Zealand new wave band, um, Graffiti Crime. So, yeah, this could be their emblem or just writing it on a wall. But um, um, this band had a little bit of traction around the world with the hit Computer Games. 
um, fantastic new wave, um, hard rock band, pub rock. You should check them out. But uh, My Six from New Zealand, this came out in 1979, and that was a bit of a smash. And we go to the BMOF of U2, Uptoon Baby, which was, frankly, their last interesting album. And I'm just putting it in for the rings of U2, where you can see it. Mm. So this was a very common thing in the 90s, where they had bands doing collages of different sort of scenes. And this sort of symbolizes everything that's on the album, which was kind of like their Berlin experiment, you know, like Bowie going to Berlin, mm -hmm. lots of dance pop, different grooves. Uptune baby. Nice. Good one. Very Excellent. cool. Very cool. All right. Who's next? Uh that would be Jamie Laszlo. Jamie, you're up. I did Quadrophenia. I didn't do who's next. So um this next one, I like the next two are like publications, how they work the band name and album title into the publication. First one's a newspaper, Jethro Tall, thick as a brick. Oh yeah. See. Yeah. Jethro Tall, feature on page seven, thick as a brick is the, and this version I have, if you can take down that big thing, is uh, <laughs> recently came out. I'm not sure if they did this in the past, but the whole thing folds out to be an actual yeah. newspaper with stories, and you can sit on the pot and read this damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so it comes wrapped in that, almost like a piece of fish. Nice. Excellent. Jane. And... Uh, wow. The next one is like a comic book. Who will save the world? Mighty Groundhogs. So you mm. go from the newspaper to a comic book, and you got them with their speak bubbles and everything, and their pee on the chest, and the guy's a whirlwind, and that's great. And the 3D effect on the Mighty Groundhogs. You know, that if I saw that as a kid as a comic book in the 70s, I probably would have begged my parents yeah. to buy it. And that's that very like Barry. That but like that's... Barry Gibb on the front cover. <laughs> Let me wait a minute. Let me bring it back up. Looks it like could Barry, be Gibb. Barry Gibb, for God's <laughs> sakes. Yeah, it's very similar to that Aerosmith cover. What was the last Aerosmith album? Oh, oh yeah, help me. Music guys, from another dimension. Yeah, very similar to that. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah, the aliens ate my Buick. Thomas yeah, Dolby. Thomas Dolby. Yeah. This next one, we, it, we could have done this last week with breaking the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to include it now because it could have been last week. But they put the logo or the into a sentence. This album, mm -hmm. this is an album by the Black Keys. Period. The name right. of the album is Brothers. Period. Cool. So totally yeah, fits. Yeah, yeah. That that would have been good for last week too. Yeah, and this week, nice one. Yeah, and that's three, right? That's cool. three. All right, over All right. to uh, Todd. Todd. Okay, well, my next one is, I think, is probably probably the best uh, version of this and a, a classic cover. That would be uh, Judas Priest, British Steel. It just, I, that just never gets old to me. Um, yeah. I just absolutely love that. Um, and then the next one is, um, I could have done a lot of things for ELO, uh, but uh, this one in particular is my favorite. This is a discovery. And... Uh, I mean, you could have done, you know, the spaceship in, uh, and out of the blue and stuff like that. But I actually love this one because it's sort of, it, it's supposed, it looks like a nostalgic kind of a picture of a different, much earlier time. But yet mm -hmm. he's holding this thing from the future. And then if you look on the inside, you get this little bonus one too, where they're going after this uh, person and, and they're trying to get whatever that is because everybody wants it, I guess. You and, stole my uh, pick, Todd. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? A little Indiana Jonesy almost. It is. It's, it's, it's kind of Star Warsy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it does look like that. Um. And then uh, the monkeys, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones. And I really like this one because it's really subtle. The uh, the monkeys mm. logo is kind of in there in the in the the, the field of flowers. Hmm. And uh, I just there's a lot of great things about this cover, but I I think that's really cool. Nice. Great one. Cool. All right, let's take a quick look at the comments. We've got uh, Sad Wings has mentioned Super Tramps, Crime of the Century, as the band's name is a constellation. Blurs Cult's most recent album has the logo coming down from the sky. Yeah, excellent. Carcass Surgical Steel, says Master List, has the logo engraved on a piece of medical equipment. Um, let's see. Neil Adams did a lot of cartoon art for rock albums. The Zombie, Odyssey, and Oracle. Uh, the Elder of Rock says uh, Metallica Live Shit logo sentence. Pay, uh, pay, yeah stencil painted on a road case absolutely yeah, that's a good Genesis one. trespass they only used that logo once since it was part of the artwork 
Oh, that's pretty cool, says Greg. Uh, Riot 5 has a nice stamp logo uh, on a Johnny uh, in uh, on Johnny Shield on the Armor of Light album, In Excess Kicks. Um, all right, over Grant, to... Grant me. Grant. <laughs> all right. Once I find it, once I scroll up to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go with... Uh, oh, well, this is kind of the same kind of thing that was just brought up. I'm going to go... My number four is Metallica. And Justice for All, so you've got the Metallica logo, like in the in the marble. It's like you know, carved out of the marble. Yeah, I'm assuming that's marble. I don't know where the statue's actually sitting. I don't know if that's in front of the marble. I don't know. But either way, I think this is a great cover. It's well, uh, it's like a good use to put the logo in there. And you know, the Metallica logo is a classic. You could yep. do practically anything with it. Um, my number five, I'm going to go with the Rubenus, which are a power pop band from the late seventies and eighties. And this is, they used their Rubenus logo in a banner. This is the EP that was produced by Todd Rundgren and they had lost some members of the band and they were just down to two members. So it's kind of a great cover. Uh, it's just kind of funny. They're poking fun at themselves, but Hey, they've got their logo in a banner. So I'm good with that. Uh, my next one, I am going to go with Jefferson Airplane uh, after bathing at Baxter's. And they've got that Jefferson Airplane logo on the back of the plane. Sweet. So I thought that was a great one, you know. Nice. So there's other Jefferson Airplane ones you could probably mention. Like Long John Silver is one. But uh, this one I think is probably the best example. Nice. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, my final four. First one is Van Halen 5150. Um, there weren't a lot of good Van Halen examples. This is a cool one because it literally looks like a manufactured item that the uh, the Atlas uh, figure is holding up there. And then uh, the logo of the uh, name of the album is is around his neck as well. So you get kind yeah. of a double out of that one. Uh, next, we've got Accept with the whole sword hilt cover. Um, yeah, there's another version of it there. And I think there's another version that's even a little clearer and better, but, uh, where the accept like, looks like it's actually built uh, right into it. I, I realized yeah. to my surprise, I didn't have it, uh, handy. Um, so this is more the illustrated one. And then I thought there was a similarity to Jethro Tull war child where he's holding that thing up and it's got the whole war child thing, uh, uh as part of it. That reminded me of the accept one. Um, and then uh, as I started thinking of Jethro Tull, just as a sideline, we've got Broadsword and the Beast where it's uh, it's a little bit, it's very much like the Opeth one that Jamie had actually, where it's, uh, you've got like the nameplate on a, on a picture kind of thing going there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and, and Benefit actually has the sign of the building as well for Jethro Tull. So there's probably a few there. So my next official one, uh, my second to last one is Twisted Sister, Come Out and Play. Um, so here you've got the uh, the Twisted Sister logo. It's obviously easier, you know, we can think of Glorious Jacot logo. It's easier when you've got the small version of a logo and you can put that thing everywhere. But here it's on the uh, the manhole cover. And then, of course, the original vinyl version of that, that manhole cover opened up and D. Snyder was underneath it. Um, but then uh, also, Grant, if you can remove that there, I had as a backup, I've got the Twisted sicker, uh, Sucker, Twisted Sister Sucker. <laughs> twisted Sucker. Sucker. Made into love a is sucker. for suckers. Uh, on the Love is for Suckers. Wow, that's a, that's a big tongue twister there. But anyways, there you go. Um, there it is used as If that. you bought that album, that album's for suckers. Exactly. Spending the money. <laughs> I never bought it. Just and my never last heard one it. Is, uh, never heard it. There you go. My last one is Bachman Turner Overdrive Japan Tour. And uh, I've got a backup for this as well, theme wise. But yeah, so the idea with this is that um, you're literally taking a photograph of the band live and you're seeing their logo behind them and just brutal placement of text otherwise. You got BTO, uh, you know, it's not even the name of the band because actually, formally speaking, it's supposed to be Bachman Dash Turner and then space overdrive right so that's wrong in on so many ways uh levels and uh and the and the album's called japan tour which is a really stupid name for a, a live album but um and on the back they've, yeah. they've got you know more of the logo on the back same kind of way and then i thought very similarly 
uh, you know, Kiss Alive does the same thing, right? Yeah. So, so again, here, it's just a photograph. The logo happens to be in the photograph. And then you get a bonus. The logo is used on a poster on the back. Uh, and then I thought uh, similar, i uh, just bring up BTO, the fact that they have this actual photographical COG logo on their That's debut cool. album done that way as well. So you've got it in lights and here you've got it uh, in metal. Uh, I think this was the first heavy album I ever owned as a as a kid as a as a new release, and it is it's pretty heavy. Actually, the funny thing about this album that's a whole theme. I I think I've done this in my podcast, but this album to me, I don't know if you guys agree or think about it. I'd love you to go away and play this. This album is the most southern rock album ever made by a band not from the south. This is so incredibly southern rock in every way. Song to song, lyrics, music, you name it. Look at the band even uh, that that you can imagine. It's more Southern rock than any Southern rock album. Um, wow. So there you go. That's my uh, that's my last four. And uh, let's just take a quick look over here to the comments. We've got uh, Weed Eater, uh, Good Luck and G Good Speed, um, Anvil Hard and Heavy. The word forms the anvil. Yes, absolutely. Lash LaRue. Uh, let's see, obituary carved in blood, logo carved into a human torso, Herb Alpert, Tijuana Brass, going places, TJB Express, taped to the airplane, um, my new band, Twisted Suckers, nice. Uh, let's see, Vector's logo fits seamlessly into their first album with the spaceship coming down and the logo, just blah, 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 Motorhead logo, he has used it a couple of cool ways. Uh, over time but again that's more like the snaggle tooth thing there's a good one with front of the freight train i think um that they used uh there you go over to uh, uh jamie uh, i think uh peter. peter no peter. you missed me all right um uh, def leopard vault their greatest hits so the reason why i've picked this one is because it's sort of embedded into this uh looks like a safe or something so I like how it's like imprinted in steel. Nice. Right. Pretty cool album yeah, cover. Yeah. Um, because Todd got ELO Discovery, I had to get <laughs> ELO Greatest Hits. I like but, this one. But this is yeah, just as good. good. Yeah, yeah, it is. Great. It's got the war medal. Yeah. So um, it looks like they actually made that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, awesome. Um, pinned really on nice. Jeff Lynn's heart. But uh, yeah, ELO's Greatest Hits. I like that a, a lot. Yeah. Devo, something for everybody. Now, this doesn't have the word, but you look at it and you know, yeah, that's Devo. You've got yeah. the little little hat. That's like a symbol. Yeah. So I think that, that sort cover. of speaks amongst many languages. Oh, look and at there that. He has it. There's my Devo hat. Nice. Yep. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I think they're doing a run of their final tour in America or somewhere. I, I, I saw them last year, so did Bicycle Legs in December, and they were absolutely sensational. So if they're near you, please see them. They're Brilliant. Hmm. Yeah, I got this Devo hat from the 80s cruise because there's a lot of Devo people on the cruise. And All you know right. the story behind this, right? The blue ones, you can buy these on their website. Uh, this is the story real quick. We got time. The only thing that Devo really has trademarked is this energy dome. And someone produced them and they somehow Devo intercepted them and got all these blue energy domes that are really counterfeit, but they ended up selling them on their site and they shut down this other, hmm. whoever was producing them. Yeah. But I got this free on the cruise. So, uh, but it's yeah. legit, well, but it's not legit. They should rename it a karma dome. <laughs> but you know what? With all the merchandise Devo has, it's funny that that's really their only trademark. Yeah, well, you go to the concert and everyone in the audience is wearing a dome, whether it's red or blue. Yeah, I wow. was, I felt left out. But anyway, wow, <laughs> but it's right. it's sort of like it's like join us, join yeah. us. <laughs> it's like a cult. That yes. is so cool. Yes, distribute the Kool Aid, ladies and yep. gentlemen. All right, nice. anyway, all right, go ahead. Now for something completely different. So do you remember those 70s compilation albums where you had scantily clad ladies yeah. or maybe an ass or something like this? The pop punk, um, punk rock band The Hard-Ons from Australia did a summary of that called Ripper 23. And you've got their um, band name on the girl's cheek. No, that's Hard a male's. 
That's a male. Oh. Or a rough anyway. looking broad. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Could That's be. a male. Anyway, Ripper 23. Somehow I, I think Bon Scott when I look at that. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Hey, finish on that note. What they're doing in Australia, I'm not judging. I don't yeah. I don't know. That's that's funny. That's and funny. we don't judge you either, Grant. No, I know. But that's a good that's a good one. It took you know what, Peter? It took me a while to find that. Um, but uh, good album. It's, good band. Okay, good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess we're going over to Jamie. Jamie, you're up. Okay. Uh my next two, they're not really logos, but I like how they work in the name or name of the album into the album cover. And my next one is Blind Melon Soup. And oh, if you yeah. look in the soup, there you go. Blind Melon. The guy nice. eating it. Very and cool. boy, did that get bad reviews back in the day. Yeah. yeah I remember, I remember thinking that. It's not that bad, but at the same time, I can't tell you last time I listened yeah. to it. <laughs> I've got it's it. Like people I, had it had it up to here with that band for some reason. They had, there was a tolerance level. I don't the, remember the being album. A, a bad record though. I think it was all right. But yeah, I don't know. What do I know? Going some uh from food to drink. Steven Stills, illegal stills. Nice. Yeah, pretty it, This is actually the first one I thought of when we came up with this topic. Hmm. Illegal That's stills great modeled one. in jars. So I'm sure that would get you mighty effed up. Yeah. And, and talking about more bad reviews, there you go. It's not that bad of an album. Well, it, it got like slaughtered it. back in the day. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, this is a weird one. I got my I got a weird one and kind of a sucky one to end on. The Kinks, 20 golden hits is seen on TV. We're gonna do <laughs> the Kiss logo. How wow. weird is that? Incorporated into the Jeez. Kinks. I've never seen that. Huh. Yeah, it's I on Ronco. It it's on at Ronco. A dollar sale. I found it for a buck at a dollar sale. Hmm. Uh, you know, it just has hits on it, and it's you know it's just cheaply put together. But that was weird. Yeah, hmm. that's weird. That was worth a dollar. Neat. And I'm gonna go with Bang's first album from 1972, and I'm gonna tell you why I don't like this. If I saw that album in 1972, I go Bang. Okay, it's coming out. If you turn the album around, it's coming out of a gun. Yeah. Is this a compilation album? Is that the name of the band? Is that the name of the album? What is this? I would have no idea. So it kind of sucks. And it, it being the first album, you would think you'd want people to know Bang is the name of the band. And that's just like, looks like a Kate Bell album. Well, what was the first uh, album? What, what did the first Blood Rock album look like? Wasn't it kind of like that? Was it well? It, it's a very oh, yeah, proto metal right. type of thing, but yeah. I always thought it was kind of goofy looking. I don't know. Yeah, but there was a record label called Bang Two that Neil Diamond was on, so I guess there could be confusion. Hmm. But uh, I don't know. All right, cool. Uh, oh, I guess I'm up. All right, let me get prepared. Oh, that's. I think I'm up. Oh wait a minute! Damn, sorry, Todd. <laughs> See, I screw up the whole order, and look, I've even screwed it up. All right, Todd. Are we right. all looking at the same order? I doubt it. I've got Grant, Todd, me, and then below we've got Peter and Jamie. Is that what you guys That's what I see. see. That's what oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to um, – never mind. Mix it up. Here's my Devo hat again. <laughs> this day put it in on. order next time. Put it on. <laughs> okay. Well, my next one is uh, Spock's beard uh, – octane i hope this is and, the right cover todd let's see well I, yeah that's it okay. and you can see it's they manufactured it as the globe on the top of the uh nice on the top of the gas pump and it's their eighth album it says number eight the whole the whole cover the the special edition is like a book and it's got it's got this whole uh it's got this whole theme of of you know the out this, these gas pumps out in the desert and it's single color the only color is red there's the band picture i think it's a really nice package um and then somebody mentioned chicago with the top with the chocolate bar i picked uh, chicago 13 where uh they mm. they did a, a very detailed illustration almost looks like a photograph of yeah. the uh marina city towers in chicago and nice. uh, i think that one's pretty pretty cool because it's kind of 3d it's kind of the logo's a little squished because you're not looking at it uh right right on top of it but then on the back there they are in the elevator Nice. Looking, looking very 1979. I always like the one where they had the roadmap 
or the yeah the yeah that's a nice one too there were there were tons of there's tons of good choices there very uh, creative yeah my next one is uh the rolling stones gur and there were a couple of rolling stones ones that i guess i could have picked but i like this one where they stuck the lips on the gorilla it's silly i don't know why nice. they decided to call an album that but <laughs> it's a creative use of the logo yeah i suppose that is cool. and then uh i'll go ahead Bran. i'm sorry what were you gonna say who? You I was just about something. to say I'm seeing the stones this summer. Completely. Oh, excellent. Well, nice. Nice. Excellent. Um, and then my last one, uh, I picked kind of a not so good album for the last one, but it's a great cover. Emerson, Lincoln Palmer in the hot seat where it's kind of mm. made yeah. into the train there. Um, not a good album, but uh, <laughs> kind of. Not a great cover. cover either, but. Yeah, that font's awful, but I like that they made it into a train the idea is okay but the execution yeah. is not so that's like the motorhead one that someone brought up with the snaggle yeah right? is yeah. it orgasmatron exactly. is it orgasmatron or a different one I'm the motorhead one probably would have been a better one to use but... yeah yeah <laughs> it looks a little cheap i don't know it yeah. does well yeah, it does. yeah i'm not sure what what label did that come out on well, it's got to be independent right which doesn't victory? exist anymore it was so, on victory i think it was on victory yeah i could be oh, mistaken oh, on that well, it tells you what i know kate <laughs> ronco like the kinks album <laughs> god all right cool well let's see what people are saying uh yeah orgasmatron, well, yeah, orgasmatron is the train one yep yeah um let's That's see a cool light us on the uh let's see we got doc holiday rides again says lash larue blue plastic flower pot brian mcfann yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, with right. the gun yeah okay yeah then. that's what i was thinking logan, that, logan. good one that's it yeah and they've got i think the the live one or is it the live one? what's the one with the sort of like uh the bubbly sort of look they, they've probably got a few uh kind of decent ones satan's court in the act yeah that's a good one hot in the shade kiss yep or the uh the sphinx idea there all right um grant well, I think i'm you a, are up it's all right final four well gentlemen we're winding this program down my number seven i'm surprised that none of you guys even mentioned this one because this is so good and i just kind of stumbled onto it because i was just it took me forever to get find what i'm gonna pick my number seven i'm gonna with triumph never surrender oh, yeah. <laughs> but what a great example. So I'm not sure if this is actually human. I guess that's his helmet, right? And the yeah. Triumph logos in it. I don't know. It's weird. This album didn't do anything, I don't think, did it back nah. in the day? That was a little bit of a hit. I mean, it relatively more of a hit than the than the next uh two or th is it two or three? Two two more with Rick and then one with Phil X, I think. Phil right? X. Yeah. yeah. I've it, never heard that it, Phil X one ever. It's, it's anyway. the heaviest one. It's kind of modern heavy. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Never surrender. So my number eight, we're gonna mention uh Martin already mentioned REO, but he didn't mention this one. I'm gonna go yeah. with the the uh, 1976 album REO, which they Obviously, call the cow you know what cover, that looks like that. Of course, looks like this, right? Get a grip. <laughs> it, yeah, it goes hand in hand with get a grip, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. But there you go, REO, which you know, it's a you know what? Yeah, there you go. Nice. And my number nine, I'm going to go with the darkness. Every time, anytime I can work in the darkness, I will. And yeah. so we've got the darkness logo on this. I don't know if this guy is actually a, a, a spaceman or uh, an astronaut or what, but the darkness logo is on his visor there. So. And that, of course, reminds us of Never Say Die. It all ties together, people. Yeah. It all ties together. And then my number 10, we're going to go with something that's right behind me because it's, if I could get it up there, there it is. Oh, look how it just jumped nice. up there. XTC drums and wires, which they incorporated into the guy's abstract face. Beauty. So nice. Wow. Nice. There you go. XTC. Cool. You always got to use some XTC. I just uh I wanted to That's rattle cool. off a couple of honorable mentions here. Um mm -hmm. The tubes, uh, the tubes and young and rich. I've shown those too many times, yeah. but that's the one where it's it's squeezed out of the tube onto the thing and it looks really nice and yummy and photographic. ZZ Top Recycler, I think, kind of fit. I, I, I looked at the ZZ Tops. They are more conventional. 
Um, the Damn the Black album, where you've got that uh, carved sort of thingy that it goes into. Cheap Trick, Cheap Trick, the 1997, the Red Ant uh, one has the Cheap Trick logo on the front of the bass drum head. Um, Boston, nobody mentioned Boston, because I think when we were talking about it, someone mentioned it and thought someone else would pick it, but the, the, whole, the whole Boston thing. Um, White Snake with the... Um, with the uh you know the 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 uh the wax seal stamp thing um slayer the famous carved into the arm slayer um you know with the blood and everything and then the blue oyster cult logo all over the place is in interesting places right. but but one of the neat ones of course in which we've shown before in this show is the on your feet or on your knees on the flags on the uh the the creepy looking hearse uh, or limo on the front cover. What a great front cover that one is, eh? Um, especially for a live album. Wow. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a few honorable mentions for. And you. I was going to do this, but we show it too often. The e oh, ELP. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I think Todd yeah. just showed that last week. I think. Right. Yep. Yeah. But that's yeah. a good one. I've got one too. The old Invincible Shield. Oh yeah. Oh that's my good. God! Talking about current current events. There you go. Nice. Yeah, Jamie, you can't show that one anymore because our Geiger counter is uh, over the top. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look at Martin guess... today. Martin's hey, and I didn't buffer, did I? He's here all week. Fire. No, no you, you fixed your issue. Break. You were you were smooth as buffer self. free. So you're using your wife's laptop, right? Yeah. Yeah, I it's did a working speed out test great. and it's much like faster than the new work computer I got. So. Good, yeah. You know what? That's kind of sad when you get the government issue work computer and it must be it's old garbage. technology. It's garbage. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Just, what uh, I'm just looking at the uh, comments here again. We've got uh, Urbana, Illinois has a street name for REO Speedwagon. Interesting, but Urbana is largely known for the University of Illinois, which I think is a better claim than REO. Nail Bomb. Uh, let's see. We've got... Uh, Veller Tack has an owl on all the covers. Deep Purple Infinite, Deep Purple Etched in Ice. Pretty cool. Dope Throne Trans Canada Anger album cover has a skull and skeleton fingers holding onto the train on fire. Super Furry Animals, Radiator Band Name Appears, Street Name Plate. Uh, all right, there you go. Uh, wrap her up, it. Grant. All right, I guess we uh, took care of it. All right, everybody. Well, I want to thank everybody in the chat for showing up. We always try to get to everything that you say. We can't get to everything, but it's all about interaction. And it's all about turning you on to these records, turning you on to these albums. So I want to thank the panel tonight, Todd Evans, Jamie Laszlo, and Peter Kern, of course, Martin and myself. If you'd like to be on these panels, you could be on these panels. We do have a Patreon. Uh <laughs> always a wonderful always a lot of things going on there so uh check that link out below and i always forget to mention this but we do have merch and the merchandise is down below too so please check that out get yourself a damn shirt for god's sakes and then uh of course we also have a kofi account uh buy us a pint or a uh cup of coffee we would love to have that but next week we already had a little bit of a powwow prior to the show and we do have our topic for next week and uh the topic is i'm gonna let everybody in the chat figure it out that's the coolest they ever looked nice. <laughs> i'm just gonna leave it at that uh contemplate that over the next week but anyway we will be back next week so same time 7 p.m eastern i guess we're eastern daylight time right now uh but we will be back so uh thanks everybody for coming and we will see you next time see you later